it is generally said that ip networks are very good for non real time applications but in order to use ip networks for real time applications some customization has to be done and we see that a comparison and a competition exists between ip and atm networks in order to empower ip networks to provide atm kind of performance multi protocol label switching networks were conceived in this module we shall understand the idea and introduce ourselves with multi protocol label switching we'd look at the network components we'd look at how forwarding is carried out in mpls at a very high speed and those who are seeking to simulate mpls networks need to understand some of the most important parameters the references that i have chosen are performance evaluation of mpls network with failure protection using opnet modeler and performance evaluation of ip version 4 and ip version 6 over mpls using opnet these two references in addition to introductory material given in kuros and ross is highly suited for new entrants in mpls multi protocol label switching as the name suggests is for supporting any protocol on the network layer it is meant to cater for the fast packet switching and routing for that mpls proposes mpls domain that comprises mpls routers all the packets which go through the mpls network have to be labeled and according to this labeling information the packets are forwarded the ip header or in general terms the network layer header is not processed only its label is processed although to begin with mpls was designed to cater for the needs for fast switching however these days it is considered a means to achieve traffic engineering and quality of service provisioning as you can see the ip qos including if serve and int serve are based on mpls and respective qos policy the underlying idea for mpls is determine the routing process once that is route once and switch for as many times as you like the packets which have been labeled according to the same traffic class are all treated alike and they are forwarded along the route that comprises the start of the route in the mpls domain called the ingress router and the exit called the egress router the mpls network components are shown here the router through which the mpls domain starts is the ingress the intermediate routers and the egress routers all these routers have to be contiguously placed it means an mpls router needs to talk to an mpls router if an mpls router is talking to non mpls router it means it is either ingress or egress router in the mpls domain let's quickly take a look at the fast switching or enhanced forwarding done in mpls here the mpls domain comprises routers r1 through r4 if there is a destination known to r1 as a it advertises to its neighbors that it can forward the labeled ip packet if it has a label of 6 it is going to send it over to destination a this information is with router r3 and r2 if you look at r3 it conveys to r4 that it can forward to destination a if it has the label incoming label of 10 it is going to assign it the label 6 so you see that there is a kind of cohesion and an understanding between neighboring mpls routers 
such that the outgoing label is the incoming label for the next router. So if the non-MPLS router such as R6 or R5 forward a packet with a label 10 for destination A or label 8 for destination A, the information in this IP packet with these labels could be either forwarded through router MPLS router R2 or R3 and subsequently to R1. Those of you seeking to simulate interesting scenarios in Omnet++ need to understand that the performance of MPLS is actually tested if the link utilization of MPLS domain is to be considered. If you want to assess how good MPLS domain routers perform in terms of providing control over jitter, both for audio and video, the end-to-end -end delay because it's meant to be fast, and in the wake of link failures, how fast detouring and route reallocation is done in MPLS is also of concern.